Each day, Mrs. Hall gives her cat one container of food and three more pieces of food. Write three different algebraic expressions to represent the number of pieces of food eaten in five days, ten days, and in thirty days. Now explain what the variable represents in each expression. So let's let x be the number of pieces of food in a particular container, because we're not quite sure how much is in a container, but we do know that they give one container of food and three more individual pieces. So therefore, in one day, if she eats one container of food and three pieces, we can let x plus 3 represent the number of pieces eaten in one day. For five days, we would want to add five one days together. So x plus 3 plus x plus 3 plus x plus 3 plus x plus 3 plus x plus 3, representing each of the one five days. However, we can combine like terms. We see that we have five x's plus 15, since we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is 15. So then we can say that the pieces eaten in five days were five times x plus three, so five times how much ever they eat in one day. We can represent 10 days by taking 10 times the amount eaten in one day and 30 days by taking 30 times the amount eaten in one day. We can then distribute to identify how many were eaten on each day. Because we know that each container holds 150 pieces of food, we can use our expression to show which size bag would be the best choice for 5, 10, and 30 days worth of food. So if we know that 150 represents the number of pieces in each bag, we can replace x, which we represented as the number of pieces in each bag, with 150, giving us 5 times 150 plus 3 which is equal to 5 times 153, or 765 pieces. Similarly, we'll take 10 times 153, which is 1,530 pieces, and 30 times 153, which is 4,490. Now we can determine which size bag of food would be the best choice for 5, 10, and 30 days. The best option would be the large bag with 5,000 pieces for 30 days. The medium bag wouldn't have quite enough, so we would need to have the large bag with a little extra left over. The distributive property applies to algebraic expressions in the same way it applies to numeric expressions. Three students disagree about how to represent the model with an expression. Who is correct? Is it Diego, who says it's 2 times 3x plus 12? Is it Susan? who says 3 times 2x plus 8, or Omar, who says 6 times x plus 4. Let's see here. Diego split the model into two equal groups. Each group contains 3x's and 12 units. So there I've boxed in the 3x's of 12 units. Susan split the model into three equal groups, and each group contained two x's and eight units. So I've, now you can see I've split the, it into to three different groups. And Omar split his into six equal groups, and each group contains one x and four units. Therefore, we can say that each of the equivalent express, each of the expressions are equivalent because overall they use the same amount, just represented in different ways to model. Diego wanted to experiment to see what happens if he were to replace each variable with the number six. So he took two times the quantity three times six plus 12, which is two times the quantity of 18 plus 12, which is two times 30, which is 60. Let's try that method with Susan, replacing x with 6. So 2 times 6, which is 12, and 12 plus 8 is 20, times 3 is 60. And 6 plus 4 is 10, times uh, 6 is also 60. So we can say that they're also equivalent because they give the same number. Rebecca says that 3 times x plus 5 is equal to 5x plus 3. Because when 6 is substituted in place of x, both expressions have the same value. Do you agree with Rebecca? Use a model and calculations. Well, 
three times, let's replace x with 6 here and see what happens. 3 times the quantity is 6 plus 5 is 3 times 11, or 33. Replacing it in to the other equation, I'd have 5 times 6, which is 30, plus 3, which is 33. What if we tried a different number to substitute, such as 8? So if I replace an each equivalent one with 8, I end up with 39 and 43. Those don't work. So let's try using a model. On the left, you'll see I have three groups of x plus 5. So I have one group, two group, and three group. And on the right, I have 5x plus 3. Notice these are not equivalent because they do not create the same shape, first of all. And second of all, they don't have the same amount of 1 values or x values on the left or the right. That tells us then that different expressions can sometimes have the same value. However, equivalent expressions have the same value regardless of which value is substituted for the variable. When Rebecca evaluates the three expressions below for x equals 4, the value of each expression is 36. Rebecca says that this means the three expressions are equivalent. Do you agree or disagree with Rebecca, and why? So yes, by substituting in 4, they all get 36. But let's look at the visual representation of this to see if they truly are equivalent expressions. So on the left here, I have 4 times the quantity of x plus 5. In the middle here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6x plus 12. And then on the right, I have 2 times the quantity of 2x plus 7 plus 6 more. I can see that although these two x values are the same, this one has 15 1 values, and this one has... Let's see here, there's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So these are not the same. This one has way more x values. So they are not equivalent in any shape or form. Draw area models to determine which expressions are equivalent. See if you can do this. Okay, so... Here I have 6 times the quantity of x plus 1. Here I have 2 times the quantity of 3x plus 6. And here I have the quantity 3 times the quantity 2x plus 4. Notice that no matter how I were to recreate this, although they have all have 6x's, they all do not have the same unit. They're not going to make the same shape no matter how I try to manipulate these. But perhaps these might be related. Let's see if I can't move some of these around to see if I can't make it the same shape as the one above. If we can, then I know they are equivalent. And I see that I've got two copies or two times the quantity of 3x plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the middle and the right equations are equivalent to one another. Draw area models to determine which expressions are equivalent. Pause the video, see if you can tackle this one. On the left, I have three times the quantity of x plus 4 plus 2x. In the middle, I have the quantity 4 times the quantity of x plus 3 plus x. And on the right, I have the quantity of 5 times x plus 3, but then it asks us to subtract 3. So I need to subtract 3 away. Now I see that the middle and the last are equivalent to one another. And no matter how I manipulate, even if I were to... Ooh, what if I were to bring it like this? I see then all three of them are equivalent to each other. 
And we can find that out if we were to distribute and algebraically determine that as well. So area models can be used to identify equivalent expressions and models of equivalent expressions have the same area. As we just found, they have to look identical to one another. Heather, Amber, and Danny are trying to decide if the expressions four times x plus two and two times two x plus four are equivalent. Circle the correct work. Here's Heather's work. She has four groups of x plus two, correct? And she has two groups of 2x1, 2x plus 4. She states that the expressions are equivalent because both models make perfect rectangles. Well, yes, they make perfect rectangles, but they don't create the same area. They don't create the same area. So although her work is slightly correct, it's not totally correct. Amber says, we have the exact same picture is that the expressions are equivalent because the models have the same area. Amber, you are correct. They have to have the same area. Now, Danny wrote four, uh, she has the expressions written, but she doesn't have the correct uh, work. She's got x plus two and then four. So her models are not even correct. The expressions are not equivalent because the models have different areas. That's true, they have different areas, but she did not represent using her algebra tiles correctly. So Danny is incorrect.